Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and doing great. My name is Deepak, and uh, we are going to talk about today cyber risk management. Today we will talk about uh, you know cyber risk management. What exactly cyber risk management is? Its core component. What exactly it means? Then we'll talk about you know why cyber risk management strategy is required. What is the use case of having it, and if we can get rid of it? What is the process? What is the purpose? Different type of cyber risk that we have, and uh, cyber risk management approach along with ISO 31000, uh, you know, standard. So let's uh, proceed. Let's basically talk about you know what is cyber risk management, which is also known as CRM. So let's talk about it. What that is. So basically, if you talk about cyber risk management, uh, before that, let's talk about risk management. So risk management basically is the process of identifying potential risk, assessing the impact of those risks, and planning how to respond if risk become reality. So basically, this is very important for every organization, no matter the size of the industry, to develop a cyber security management plan so that you can protect yourself from those uh, scenarios. Because if you are not going to have uh, any, any kind of cyber risk scenarios or a plan, it's going to impact the name and fame of your organization. So why we need cyber risk management strategy? Like, can't we uh, go forward without this? Let's take a look. So we there are various uh, uh, you know reasons for it. Like, well, let's talk about the primary three reasons which justifies why we need CRM. So the first is mitigating cyber risk and preventing attacks. So we're in uh, when we want to mitigate the cyber risk and different attacks which can happen on the environment. So for that, we basically you know need the cyber risk management strategy. Along with that, uh, the other reason is we basically need to reduce cost and uh, protecting revenue. So wherein um, you know we want to uh, reduce the production cost. We want to at the same time we also want to have basically a way through which we can monitor each and every component they are secure or not uh, what are the vulnerabilities that we have so all those kind of things basically are going to be uh, you know we basically can uh, you know uh, check and we basically can validate using the crm means that are we really secure or not so uh, next is the increased brand reputation or uh, increased business reputation one the same thing because if any company is going to be compromised so it's going to impact the name and fame of your organization so eventually it's going to become the big uh, issue for example any of the organization that you're going to have if it is their uh, uh, you know uh, the organization is going to be compromised no customer no client will want to do the business with them why they want to you know um, compromise their data so this is going to be again one of the biggest issue so these are the major primary three reason um due to which uh, you know I, I can say that you know we need a cyber risk management strategy which is also known as C, uh, crm some people say cr uh, cr ms one and the same thing now talk talk about basically cyber risk management process so basically this entire process is divided into six phases so now basically like you have like you know every field have its own um, life cycle like software development have its own life cycle your uh, security management has its own life cycle likewise basically for uh, your cyber risk management we have its own life cycle which have six phases first is identify so which says that identify the risk that might compromise your cyber security so second is um, analyze analyze basically says that analyze the severity of the risk by accessing its occurrence and its impact Third is evaluate. Evaluate whether the risk is in level of acceptable risk or not. Next is basically prioritize, which means that you have to prioritize the risk where you can have maybe so many risks. So you have to prioritize which are you know topmost risk, which has to be remediated first, on which you have to take action first. So you, you have to basically uh, you know prioritize each and every risk. Next basically uh, so which basically says that you know once you have prioritized the risk. You have to decide how to respond to every risk. So wherein uh, you have to basically, you know, figure out how to treat the risk, how to terminate if the risk is at low level, how to basically transfer the risk um, if the impact is very low. Last is monitor, wherein you have to monitor the risk. So these are the six phases of um, cyber risk management process. Now moving on. What is the purpose of a cyber risk management process? Let's uh, just have an understanding about it. So basically the purpose of risk management is to identify potential problem before they occur so that risk handling activities may be planned and invoked as they needed across the life of the product 
of the project to mitigate adverse impact of achieving objectives. So what are different type of uh, cyber risks that we can have? Let's talk about it. We basically can have uh, so many type of uh, cyber risks like phishing, malware, um, you know, form jacking. Let's talk about, uh, you know, these risks one by one. What is a phishing? Let's take a look. So it's like, you know, catching a fish, like, you know, the terminology that we have basically used is like, you're trying to catch something, you know, you're trying to catch the risk. So uh, basically most of the attacks on financial institution uh, in the past three years have not been through brute force attack on firewall appliances. So they are through acquiring user passwords. So getting the user password, this technique is known as phishing. So like what uh, exactly, uh, you know, uh, phishing is used for, let's take a look. For various things you need phishing, like wherein uh, you're uh, stealing your confidential data, like stealing your username and the passwords. So once your username and passwords are going to be compromised, then in that case, someone can log in uh, to your account on your behalf. Next is basically harvesting login credential. So wherein, uh, uh, wherein if someone has your login credential, sometimes you know some people reveal uh, your data to, to other people, other parties. Sometimes they send, uh, they sell your data, you know, to some of the companies like for insurance companies, everything they make, uh, you know, they make the money. Third is impersonating, which is also known as spoofing. Wherein uh, now, for example, I have the credentials of Bob, so I can log into his account and I can impersonate, I am Bob. I can send the emails from his account, so stating that you're know, transfer thousand dollar to Mr. H account, where H is the hacker. So for all this kind of thing, phishing is basically used. So wherein, like I said, it has been through uh, acquiring user passwords. That technique is known as phishing. Now, if we take a look uh, in this phishing awareness example, this is one of the example of uh, phishing. If you see, you see basically this email is coming from uh, you know Amazon. It says Amazon. If uh, basically you see the body, you will be able to see the uh, you know logo of the Amazon. Subject says Amazon. But if you look, uh, look basically carefully, what it says basically is um, you know. Amazon, basically management at amazoncanada.com, where M is missing. So in, in hurry, if you're going to read it, you will basically, you know, you will not see uh, basically A. So what we have to basically take care of in this, such kind of scenarios is, you should look out for common generalized addressing. You, could, you should always check the sender's email address, and also you should always forward the link, uh, you know, to the, uh, check the redirect address. Now, for example, in this case, if you're going to hover the link, you will be able to see a different address. So you should always basically, you know, hover the mouse and you should always basically, you know, check the email address. Now, next one that we have is form jacking. So what exactly is form jacking? So form jacking is when cyber criminals inject malicious JavaScript code to hack a website and take over the functionality of the entire website from page to collect the sensitive user information. So form jacking is designed to steal credit card details and information from payment form so it can be captured on the checkout page of the website. So now someone is aware about your um, you know, credit card information. So they can easily use your credit card information to log into your account, right? Where they can log into your account, they can purchase some things, and you're going to get built. Even one kind of uh, one type of attack happened wherein the hacker was able to get the information of uh, so many um, uh, you know users like almost like 1 million users and what they did, they made a transaction of uh, $1 for every account. So when they made a transaction of $1 from, from every account, some of the people, they don't notice it because they think it's a very small money. I have uh, maybe purchased something. So after a couple of uh, months, it was realized that some hacking is happening wherein all the user accounts are getting, um, you know, impacted due to this, wherein they are getting charged for a dollar and uh, some, some certain cases people were thinking that maybe for some of the services they got charged for validation purpose and that amount is going to come back. They started realizing that uh, that money is starting from their account and it's not coming back. Now, for example, if you're going to have 100 million users, from 100 million users, if you're going to take one, $1 from every one account, how much amount is going to be? It's going to be $100 million, which is going to be a huge amount, right? So that's again, one of the small example of, uh, you know, form checking wherein what will happen is your intruder your hacker basically is going to inject malicious javascript code to hack the entire website next one that we basically have is a malware so basically the case of malware uh, you know there are various uh, forms of uh, malware you can say computer virus fiveware adware worms trojan horse so basically your computer uh, virus is something virus stands for a vital information resource underseas wherein um, the hacker will try to uh, you know 
uh, change the, some, some information on your system and he will try to manipulate the entire information. In the case of um, you know worms, it's the uh, same thing, but in a different way. Worm basically keep on replicating it to itself till the time your entire system has not gone down. Adware basically looks like a normal ad to you, but it's not a normal ad. Basically, this is you know um, a malware. Uh, when you go to click on it, it's going to install the malware on your system. Trojan host basically uh, is the one wherein uh, it's going to sit silently in your computer as a piece of code, which will look like a legitimate code. And uh, you know, uh, once it is going to be executed, it's going to reveal your sensitive information to the unauthorized person, basically to the attacker. So there can be various various malwares. This these are again a very small category of it. In itself, it's a different world. Even the you know the things that I'm telling you guys in the course, we go in more detail. But uh, again, here we are talking about the glimpse of each and every thing. Now, how may, uh, malware basically you know uh, can compromise your system? There are Various ways, uh, ways to which it can compromise. Again, first is through email attachment. You get some malicious hyperlink uh, due to which it can basically compromise your system. Second is the software download. You downloaded a file which looks like a you know, normal file, but it has a virus in it. So it's going to you know um, download the malware into your system, which can basically infect the system. Next is the OS vulnerabilities. So wherein your operating system will have certain vulnerabilities uh, which will give an advantage to the attacker to compromise your system. For example, you have not patched your system from a long time. You have not basically installed the, some of the updates on the application from a long time, which will give an advantage to your hacker. Now, how we can stop the malware? There are various ways. First, basically, is uh, for one of the very uh, you know common ways, uh, suspicious link, wherein you should stop clicking on suspicious links. Always study the URL. And make sure that you are not on a counterfeit site. Like for example, in the Amazon example, we have seen that it looks like a legitimate page, but the hyperlink was maybe redirected to a different page. So you should be very cautious towards it. Next is a update firewall. So basically, updating your firewall is always a great idea. So firewalls basically prevent the transfer of large data files over the network in a hope to weed out attachments that may contain malware. Nine, the last one is the updated OS. So it's very important to make sure that your computer operating system is up to date because software programmers update program frequently to uh, address any holes or the weak points. Now, if you want to basically take, um, you know, the course from us uh, from Eureka, where you want to have the in-depth knowledge about every component. So this is a structured learning of entire Eureka course, which is going to look like so. Basically, in the first class, we are you are going to learn about uh, what is cybersecurity, ethical hacking, its components, and uh, with the perspective hands-on. Then after that, you are going to learn about cryptography uh, and its component with the perspective hands-on. The next class, we will learn about basically you know what exactly is computer network security with the hands-on. In the fourth class, we will learn about application web security with the hands-on. Fifth class, you will learn about identity access management, how you can provide role based access controls with the hands on. Next class, we will learn about vulnerability analysis, system hacking, different tools that you, through which you can do with the hands on. In the seventh class, you will learn about what is sniffing, what is SQL injection attack, how it can be done manually, automatically uh, with different tools with the hands on. Then in the last class, you will learn, learn about DOS, which is the Allo service, session hijacking with the perspective hands on on it. Next basically is risk management approaches. So we basically have uh, so, so many risk management approaches if you talk about, you know, because after the risks are identified and risk management process has been implemented, there are different types of risk strategies that can be taken to a different type of risk basically. So like risk uh, avoidance, you have to basically use different ways through which you can avoid the risk. Next is a risk reduction, the different ways you can, you can try to reduce the risk. Risk sharing through which you can share the risk to other components. And last one is the risk retaining. Now, talking about ISO 31000 standard, you know what that is. So ISO 31000 basically is an international standard which was published in 2009. That basically provides principles and guidelines for effective risk management. So basically it outlines a generic approach to risk management which can be applied to different type of risk which is financially uh, you know through safety project risk which can be used by any type of organization so standard provides a unique you can say vocabulary um, you know and concept for discussing risk management so i hope that you have really enjoyed a lot you have learned a lot so it was an immense pleasure to meet all of you guys stay safe bye bye